Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to work on a round bait caster. It's a nice looking reel, kind of the size of a, a Shimano Calcutta. This one happens to be a Bass Pro uh, reel. It's a Bass Pro Cat Max. Uh, no indication who makes it other than it's made in China. I, I don't know the manufacturer. This one came in from Andrew in Maryland and he said he self-serviced it. Seems like he did a nice job. But what he said was it appears that the drag washer uh, need to be tightened down pretty far before they're grabbing. So this is probably going to be more of an inside look rather than a service. Uh, we'll take an inside look. Fortunately, uh, the Bass Pro uh, packaging came with the, uh, the schematic that's, that uh, is the breakdown of the reel. And uh, we're going to concern ourselves with the drag stack just to make sure everything's on there properly. If it is, then, uh, well, I guess an ounce of prevention, right? You just want to check it out and make sure everything's right. So we're going to start by removing the, the handle and the side plate. We'll show you how this reel is made. Uh, we'll kind of give you an opinion maybe if uh, necessary. Andrew says he uses it for big catfish down in Maryland. That's uh, it's kind of fun. And uh, we'll uh, see if we can get this one back out there fishing again. Looks like we have a, an 11 or a 12 millimeter nut on the handle. Let's get that off. It's a uh, 12 millimeter or so it seems. And while I take these off, I want to take a moment to thank our first responders and essential personnel, everybody involved uh, in keeping us safe during the pandemic, the uniformed service folks, uh, fire, EMT, police, the rescue, everybody, and uh, everybody that's involved in the medical fields, treating those who've contacted the virus. I mean, this is two years now. We're getting kind of tired of this, I think, but uh, these folks go uh, endlessly. Well, something seems a little amiss here because the uh, the paint on this uh, piece is worn right at the bearing. There is a click washer, and I think maybe that's the issue right there. We're going to find out by the schematic, but it looks like it's possible that uh, these two have been reversed. I found them in the cup. We're going to find out if they belong in the cup or if they belong behind the cup by looking at the schematic. So, just got to trace it all down here. No, they belong in the cup, interestingly enough. So it says burring, uh, washer, cup, clicker, two tension washers. And uh, we're pretty much set there. I didn't, uh, didn't see any variance to what should belong there. So let's go inside. It's very unusual that we are that tight. You should have some play there. So we'll take a look on what's going in. Maybe we have a one drag washer. I'm not sure. I guess we're going to find out. So this is much like an Abu kind of a reel that you just crack it and then you can back off the, the two screws that hold the reel in. And we should be able to remove the side plate with those two. Let's see what we can do there. Yep, we can remove the side plate. I'm going to just take a quick look inside. We have the the spool, the spool bearing. I know he said he just serviced it, so for a point of illustration, get some oil onto the bearings. You got one on each side of the spool. Make sure that that gets saturated. It says it's a four ball bearing reel. Those are two of them. This is the third. There's probably one up top here. It would make the fourth. And that spool adjuster on this side. Oh, not seeing a bearing there, but okay. We'll see if we can't find the other one. All right, overall the reel is clean. And again, he just did the service on it, so we'll trust that part of it. And uh, sometimes, you know, what they say about assumptions, right? Uh, you assume and, well, I just did a reel. For example, I had a bail problem and uh, somebody put the springs on the wrong sides of the reel. <laughs> Go figure, right? Uh, but, you know, things happen. People make mistakes. And one of the ways to avoid mistakes is by taking the pictures along the way. Now I take pictures with the video. It shows me how the reel comes apart. And uh, it gives me a reference point if I stall. If something goes wrong, I can always go back and look and say, well, there's is how I took it off, so now I've got to go figure out how to put it back together again, or what I did out of sequence, or what I did in terms of the wrong orientation. All right, well, I'm taking the two screws out now that are going to release the case. That's the one on the one side. 
These are Phillips head screws. And I'm going to lay them on my table just to make sure that they're the same size. They should be, but uh, you never know. So take them out and verify that and then put them into your parts tray so that you don't lose it. I use a uh, bottom of a milk jug as a parts tray. Um, whatever ordering and sequencing works for you is, is perfectly fine. I happen to be comfortable doing it this way, so if you have a different way, that's okay too. All right, we should be able to remove this now. And let's take a look inside. We have the ball bearing and we have the anti-reverse clutch. So if I'm looking at my stack now, the last one in was the ball bearing and then the anti-reverse clutch was next. And then we had a washer sitting on top. This one is not the washer, that's the ferrule. That goes inside the gear. Now there should be a washer here. That would be next. So let's go ahead and remove this. So this uh, this reel has your customary yokes, uh, yoke. It's got the two springs on the side of it. And whenever I work at one of these uh, bait casting reels, I like to pull those springs off and get them into my parts tray. There's just, that's a problem waiting to happen. I notice when you turn reels and the like, from time to time, you wind up uh, with those springs popping. And again, that's nothing nobody ever wants to do. At least I don't want to do. Here's the first of the drag washers. We should be able to remove this whole main gear set up here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just take a quick look below. This is the click ratchet, so that won't have anything to do, but there should be a washer on the back end of the, the main gear. There is. That goes in next. The reel looks like a nice reel. It, uh, it's got a metal yoke. It's got the uh, pinion gear lined up properly. Again, he's he's just serviced this, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing grease and the like. We'll put a little bit more grease on there just because we took the reel apart. And Bass Pro, uh, it looks like they contract with a trade reel manufacturer. A trade reel manufacturer is somebody who makes the same reel or similar reels for different customers and uses their, their product name as the, uh, the manufacturer of the reel. And uh, in this case, somebody made it for Bass Pro. And uh, those are job shops. All right, I'm just uh, pulling these out. We'll see what we have. And we'll compare that to what the, uh, the schematic diagram calls for. And it calls for the main gear. These washers appear to be carbon tech, so that's a nice washer. First up goes the uh, piece. Now, this is not going to have any effect at all on the, on the height of it. That's for sure. Next up then would be the flat round one. That makes sense. Those are called keyed washers. We're going to have our next one up here, which is the second of the drag washers. These don't need oil or lubrication as they appear to be carbon techs. Next one is the ear washer. Then this one. Then this washer. Now this washer appears to be flat on the schematic, but it's got the hump that the, the uh, part number 41 on the diagram called a uh, Teflon washer. Hmm, Teflon washer is missing. Let's see if that's on the back of this. And it's it's not on the back of that. So I don't think that there's anything wrong in the way that Andrew did this. I think this gear has substituted the hump for that Teflon washer. And I'm going to go ahead and say that the uh, the issue is not here and that this is a normal... Uh, method as we uh, we've looked at all of this in terms of the stack. So we started with the click ratchet Right there. There's the click ratchet. We had the washer behind We have the main gear. We have that drag stack just assembled. This is what shows different, but I believe we've had an altered uh, Cap washer up here so that you they have eliminated that then we have our uh, anti-reverse 
And then if we move down again, we have the back end of this. There's your bearing, one of the tension washers, the click ratchet, the two tension washers above, the star adjuster. So this, to me, is correct. So, uh, Andrew, I think you did it right. I, uh, I understand what you're saying about uh, it takes a little bit to crank down, but there's nothing missing as best I can tell. So I think you did a fine job with this. I applaud you on that. We'll get this reel back to you. Uh, if it becomes problematic from a fishing standpoint, we'll try to figure that out. But uh, maybe that was it. I just noticed that as I push the anti-reverse in, I think that's, that may be it, that now you have clearance. Well, not much, though. You have some clearance on that ball bearing. But that shouldn't be scraped there. I don't, uh, I don't get that part of it. All right, let's go put it back together. So for everybody else, we've seen a little bit of a look in terms of the how this is made up. Nice reel. Uh, I haven't had one of these in the shop before, but that uh, that doesn't mean much. Take that bearing out, and that's quite possible that as we've just reinstalled this. That, uh, that, that bearing may come up a little more. Let's see. There's usually that anti-reverse collar or clutch has to sit firmly in the side plate. Now, those of you that are watching me know that this is one of my bugaboos here, these small screws. So if you like this kind of thing, if you like the art of reel repair as a hobby, if you want to learn more about fishing reels and how they're made, or maybe you're just looking to buy one and you want to see uh, uh, if I've done some service on it so you get an inside look like this one. Well, uh, if you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button, that's the best way to do that. And uh, you'll see when I post and what I post, and you can choose the reels that uh, you may like to see out of these. If you uh, have any questions, please leave them in the question section of this. and. Uh, We'll try to answer those as best I can. All right, I just I see that it says one. I just, this one here should, should be all there is. And that brings the cap, you can see that brings the cap up above this collar, and that bearing did move out a little bit. So these uh, Carbon Tex washers are very thin. When they're very thin, you don't have a lot of adjustment uh, play in the reel. And uh, when you don't have that adjustment play, um, sometimes maybe it feels like it belongs, like, like they're too high. But as long as you have this gap here, this gap between the, the uh, compression points and the case, the drag is going to operate properly. I do notice that this bearing is up more than it was before. I think uh, we may have had a situation where that uh, uh, anti-reverse clutch was just wasn't pressed into the system, uh, into the case all the way. Not a problem. Put it back together. All right. We'll put that back on. Next up is the star adjuster. Be careful as you do this to get it started properly. You do not want to cross thread the adjuster. If you do, you're going to have a problem later. So this has a little point on it. If that point doesn't seat in here, the next thing you want to do is go underneath and make sure that you seat it properly. I think this will probably just work its way in. Yep, it's working its way in. Okay, and then we have the handle goes on next. Tension ring that keeps the oops, the tension ring belongs underneath. If you're using your handle as a wrench, you have to remove that to put this tension ring back in. That keeps the handle from locking in on the star adjuster. Do the cap. So I like the uh, the make of it. Looks fine. We have uh, you know the ball bearing construction. Reasonably uh, good materials in there. I think, uh, you know, if you're Bass Pro Shop or Cabela's or, or any of these that want a store brand, 
you got to make sure that you're buying quality from the beginning because that's that's going to have your brand name on it and it's going to re reflect poorly on you if the reels don't operate properly or if they don't have the uh, the, the durability or what whatever your expectation is in buying that reel well you're gonna you know you may not go to Bass Pro Shop to buy another reel you may also not go there to buy uh, clothing or tackle or anything else that they're selling and, and Bass Pro doesn't want that so they want to make sure that you're um, um, satisfied and, and so the reels that they should be making or, or having made for them need to have a certain level of quality too. All right, we have a stud on the side here for your free spool release. Best way to get that seated properly is to trip this into free spool so that that piece is all the way down. That way you won't run into an issue when you go to load this uh, thumb lever. Also pull it up. Make sure that the thumb lever is all the way on the top. That will pretty much guarantee success as you go to reset the side plate. That goes for all these types of reels, whether it's this, whether it's a uh, Abu uh, Ambassador, or any of the, the round bait casters that you find. You need to, to work on these to make sure that the thumb bar is set properly. Otherwise, well, I get a lot of reels in my shop saying I took my reel apart and now my thumb bar doesn't work. And then my I can pretty much guess that one before it ever comes into the shop. And I try to coach people, if they're sending it in on an email, I try to coach them how to reset that before. All right, let's see what we do now. All right, well, this is still working beautifully. We have a tight drag. Tighten it down a little bit more. I think we're, we're plenty good here. So. I didn't hear any scraping going on in the star adjuster. Yeah, we still have a lot of room here, and I guess if you had a, um, a traditional uh, fabric washer as opposed to like a carbon tex washer, this gap would be, would be less. You have plenty of room here for that cap to go, and uh, the only thing that would be dragging on this would be that that click um, starts rubbing up against the casing. But if, if that click was rubbing up against the casing, this reel wouldn't turn this smoothly. What you would have is you would have a horrible handle drag because the uh, the click would be running flat on here. So, Andrew, I'm going to tell you, you did a good job on this and that the, uh, the stacks all check out the way they should and that uh, no further adjustment is needed. So, to everybody else, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've learned a little bit more about this uh, Bass Pro Cat Max. And uh, if you're considering buying it, well, you've had an internal look at it. It's a forward wall bearing system. It seems like it has nice gearing inside of it. I didn't see a lot of plastic in the reel at all. And it looks like it'll stand up to some big fish. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, to everybody, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.